Good. Okay, so we'll now start the uh, final session, and the first talk is an invited talk by uh, Shunji Matsura on non stochastic Hamiltonian in QAC and spin glass. Thank you very much. So uh, I'd like to talk about our error correction in quantum annealing and some usage of a non stochastic Hamiltonian. So this work was done in, uh, in collaboration with uh, Hideto Shinishimori, uh, Walter Binch, Daniel Lider, and Tamim Arbaj. So, yeah. so the motivation of this study is to understand how to improve the performance of uh, uh, quantum annealing. So as we know, um, the, most of the um, inter practically interesting problem uh, requires a huge number of qubits. And if the system size becomes large, it gets more harder and harder to get the uh, right answer. And so uh, success rate can decay really quickly. And then in this case, we can't trust uh, the computational result of quantum annealing. And we want to avoid that. We want to keep the success rate as high as possible. So um, the most important quantity, maybe one of the most important quantity in uh, solving an optimization problem is the energy gap between the ground state and the excited state. If you can keep the energy gap large, um, you can finish the computation in a short time, and also you can keep the success rate high. But if the gap closes, then uh, ch the ch chance of you making a mistake gets higher. So we want to avoid uh, this gap closing. And since uh, in physics, uh, the gap closing, closing is related to our quantum phase transition, we could say that uh, in order to improve uh, the performance, uh, we have to systematically remove the or weaken or sometimes avoid a quantum phase function. So this is the objective of this talk uh, research. So in this talk, uh, we consider two ingredients. One is a uh, quantum annealing correction, and this is a, a programmable uh, anne uh, error correction method that uh, uh, Walter Winch uh, talked uh, two days ago. And uh, the other uh, ingredient is uh, this non-stochastic Hamiltonian. So uh, we start with this uh, nested uh, quantum annealing correction. Um, so what I explained the detail, so I, I'm going to review this, this very briefly. So uh, in this uh, nested quantum annealing correction, we first uh, make a logical qubit by using uh, several um, physical qubits. So this part, this one is one logical qubit, and this one is also a logical qubit and logical qubit. And uh, each logical qubit consists of a, a multiple a physical qubit, and we connect a physical qubit ferromagnetically. And uh, we uh, denote uh, the coupling strength by, by lambda. And then uh, we connect a logical qubit um, based on this uh, um, uh, uh, the coupling strength of a uh, 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 logical qubit, GIJ. We embed the O2O -O interaction to uh, describe the interaction. And so uh, first, uh, we consider the simplest model, which is a Peabody uh, ferromagnetic system. And this is a uh, uh, physical Hamiltonian of a uh, Peabody ferromagnetic system in uh, nested quantum annealing correction. The first time uh, I uh, represent a logical qubit index, like uh, yellow, blue, and uh, red. And C represent a physical qubit within a logical qubit. So uh, we have uh, one, two, three, four. And uh, in general, we can have a, a larger number of this, and we denote it C. Okay. So this is a, a Peabody ferromagnetic interaction. And second time, this is a penalty term and the coupling strength is lambda, and a transverse, uh, uh, transverse field acts on uh, each individual um, uh, physical qubit, and uh, the strength is uh, lambda, oh, sorry, gamma. Okay, so um, we want, since uh, we want to understand the, the phase transition uh, structure of this uh, uh, nested annealing, um, we use a mean field analysis. So this is a uh, nested annealing, is, uh, nested QAC is an uh, O2O interaction. So, the, um, the mean field analysis gives a very uh, precise uh, result. And to do this uh, mean field analysis, we first have to choose the order parameter. And in this case, uh, we have an extensive number of order parameter. Um, so the first one is uh, sorry, um, expectation value of a logical qubit, each logical qubit, which is this one. And then the second one is a total magnetization, total uh, uh, order parameter, this one. And by using uh, those um, uh, order parameters, uh, we can compute a partition function by using uh, Suzuki Torota method. And then uh, this is a uh, uh, free energy form. So uh, we first consider our first order phase function. So in that case, um, we need to choose P, the P body interaction P, um, greater than 3. Okay. And, and uh, 
we choose a uh, 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 penalty coupling to be a quadratic. So this is an arbitrary uh, number in general, but we choose it to be two. Okay, so uh, this is how the phase function looks like. Um, so uh, I plot the free energy as a function of order parameter, and we use a uh, uh, very uh, small value of uh, um, uh, penalty coupling. So in this case, uh, there is a, a strong first order phase function. Namely, um, so when the, uh, the transverse field is large, uh, the quantum state stays on a uh, paramagnetic phase, order the phase, uh, which has uh, m equals zero. And then uh, um, when the uh, transverse field becomes smaller, uh, you switch uh, the ground state switch to a finite value of uh, order uh, m, which is a ferromagnetic state. So uh, there is a, a first order phase function, and as you see, uh, there is a big uh, potential barrier between these two uh, uh, potential minimum. Now uh, we increase the penalty in this system. Then, uh, as you see, uh, um, the potential barrier starts to become smaller. Like uh, this is a uh, um, penalty term is uh, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.6, and then uh, as you increase the penalty term. Eventually, the, this first order disappears, almost disappears. So uh, this is very good for uh, quantum annealing. Now uh, we want to uh, evaluate uh, this uh, energy gap. How the, uh, we want to understand how the energy gap uh, becomes larger. Okay. So uh, the, uh, maybe the most uh, common way to uh, technique to uh, estimate the energy gap is the instanton solution. So. Uh, to, uh, to uh, compute the instanton, uh, we have to go back to the uh, free energy. So this is, uh, again, the, the same one, the free uh, uh, partition function in the uh, partition integral formalism. And this m is now an uh, order parameter, but this order parameter is a function of Euclidean time tau. Okay. So normally, uh, we use a static approximation, which means that uh, this order parameter uh, doesn't change along this uh, Euclidean time direction. So you stay here and here. So this is a static solution, and this solution is called a zero instanton. There is no tunneling between these two different particles. And at critical point, a free energy of here and a free energy of this one is, becomes equal. Okay. And now um, we consider a quantum fluctuation around this uh, configuration. Then in that case, uh, we have to take into account the transition between different uh, vacuoles. So in um, this case, uh, this is a, it's called a two instanton solution. So you first uh, stay in uh, the vacuum uh, M equal M1, and then uh, uh, have a transition from uh, M1 to M2, and then come back to uh, uh, M1. So we have to uh, come back to M1 because uh, in finite temperature, you have to identify uh, tau equal zero and uh, tau equal beta. So we, we impose a periodic boundary condition in Euclidean time direction. Okay, so, um, so this uh, transition rate is uh, uh, obtained by um, uh, solving the uh, saddle point equation of a Euclidean uh, action uh, with certain boundary condition. And uh, so formally, you can write it this, but uh, this is, um, and I will estimate this uh, number in a more diff slightly different way. But after uh, summing over all the instanton, like two instanton, or four instanton, and we have to take an infinite number of instanton, then uh, you get a really simple form of partition function, which is this one. So uh, this uh, matrix has a, a, the diagonal component of this matrix is uh, F0, which is uh, uh, the uh, uh, free energy of uh, M1 and M2. And if this uh, uh, transition rate is zero, then you have two degenerate uh, ground state, as we expect. But now, uh, if you take into account this uh, uh, transition rate, um, you get the off diagonal component here and here. And then in that case, uh, this uh, degeneracy uh, has, uh, um, disappears, and uh, uh, you, you start to see uh, energy splitting. And this, uh, uh, and this uh, energy splitting gives uh, the energy gap at the quantum phase function. And uh, so you can easily see that the, the, um, uh, two eigenvalue, uh, the difference of the, these two uh, eigenvalues is given by 2 epsilon. Okay. So essentially, the energy gap is given by um, uh, the instanton action. Okay. Okay. So uh, now um, we want to evaluate the uh, instanton action. But normally, uh, we have to solve the uh, saddle point equation, and that is uh, difficult. But uh, there is a simple way to evaluate this, and that is a uh, fast transition approximation. So uh, this is an approximation that uh, transition from uh, M1 to M2 is instantaneous. So it doesn't take uh, any um, time duration. So in that case, uh, this uh, 
instant uh, action, uh, instant value is evaluated. Actually, this gives a uh, lower bound of the mass gap. It is it, it's given by uh, the overlap of uh, two states, M1, which is a quantum state here, and M2, is, and M2 is a quantum state here. And at uh, each shadow point, uh, you can write down the linearized uh, effective Hamiltonian, which is given this one, and M1 and M2 are ground state of this uh, effective Hamiltonian. Okay. So uh, now we can easily evaluate uh, this overlap, and you can see uh, this is the overlap uh, as a function of penalty. So when uh, there is no penalty, this overlap is small. But uh, as you increase the uh, penalty, then uh, overlap becomes uh, large, and at some point it becomes one. Okay. So this is a critical point, and uh, this this is uh, I chose a peak of four, and in this case uh, when uh, lambda equal four, this uh, transition happens. Okay. So uh, what happens uh, when uh, if you in keep increasing this uh, penalty, then uh, to understand this, we have to look at, uh, study uh, free energy more carefully. And I just show the, uh, the result. So for P equal three case, we have a first order phase function. And, uh, um, and as you increase the uh, penalty, this, uh, uh, the potential barrier gets smaller and smaller. But this uh, potential barrier exists in any range of uh, in any value of uh, lambda penalty coupling. So you cannot, uh, comp although um, this uh, instant becomes small and energy gap uh, becomes uh, uh, larger, you cannot completely remove this first order phase function. But uh, for a larger value of p, um, something different happens. So uh, we looked at uh, p equal four phase, and uh, there was a transition. And uh, at this point, uh, the first phase function disappears and becomes a second order phase function. And for larger value, uh, there are two, uh, three uh, different uh, states. The first one is uh, the, this is a large, uh, big uh, first order phase function. So you have uh, the energy gap is highly suppressed. And then uh, this region, uh, you have both a first order and second order. So what happening is like this. Um, uh, there is a first order, a second order phase function from a paramagnetic phase to a ferromagnetic phase. This is a second order phase function. And then after that, uh, there is a, a first order phase function within the uh, ferromagnetic phase. And if you keep increasing uh, the uh, penalty coupling, this uh, 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 first order phase function also disappears. And then uh, eventually you have only a second order phase function. And that means uh, we can um, significantly improve the um, uh, computation result or shorten the um, uh, annealing time by using uh, this uh, nested quantum annealing. So next, uh, we consider a P equal two case. And in this case, we have uh, only a second order phase function. There's no first order phase function. So uh, you cannot uh, use our uh, instanton method to estimate uh, energy gap. But uh, we can consider uh, just a quantum fluctuation. Um, uh, we can estimate an uh, um, energy gap by looking at the fluctuation from a uh, semi-classical or mean field configuration. So um, this is the same as um, harmonic oscillator. Okay. So uh, this is uh, just a technical detail. Um, first, uh, uh, for convenience, um, we write uh, we, two, uh, we rotate a uh, spin coordinate so that uh, in a new coordinate, this is a logical qubit. And uh, this is a, a logical qubit after uh, rotating the uh, spin coordinate. And uh, we choose a theta so that the uh, spin is always pointing in, in z direction. Okay. And then uh, since we want to uh, study the quantum fluctuation from a classical configuration, we uh, describe this uh, spin operator in terms of bosonic operator. So A and A dagger are creation and annihilation operator of uh, bosonic operator, of boson. Okay. So this is a whole sign uh, of uh, transition. So this is a, a transformation form in the uh, large C limit. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, this, is, uh, this analysis is it doesn't have to be a, a O2 or um, interaction. So you can use any uh, like a chimera uh, graph or so on. As long as uh, this, uh, the number of physical uh, spin, uh, physical qubit C is large, this analysis is valid. Okay. And then uh, we uh, plug this. Uh, uh, expression into a Hamiltonian and ex expand uh, in, in ter terms of A and A dagger. So uh, the Hamiltonian, the first, uh, the, this is a leading term and uh, this is a quadratic term. The leading term is described by this, this one and uh, it gives a, a critical point. Okay. So uh, above this, uh, uh, if the transverse field is bigger than this, uh, you have a, a spin pointing in x direction in the original coordinate. And uh, below this coordinate, uh, the spin starts to point in z direction. Okay. 
So this is a critical uh, point. And then a quality term is this one. So uh, this uh, quality part contains the information of mass gap. Okay. So, uh, okay, so this expression is uh, messy, but uh, um, we can uh, simplify by doing a uh, Fourier transformation and then uh, diagonalize it by uh, using um, Bogoliuba transformation. And uh, after uh, some computation, uh, we get a very simple form. Okay. And this uh, omega zero is uh, the mass gap of zero mode, and omega one is uh, uh, the mass gap of um, uh, higher modes. Okay. So this uh, is the result. Um, I didn't show the, the detail of this uh, form of omega zero and omega one, but uh, we can, this is uh, how the energy gap causes near the critical point. Okay, so uh, above this uh, uh, critical point, uh, energy uh, the energy gap closes like this, and uh, gamma c is a critical point, and uh, uh, below this uh, critical value, uh, the gap closes like this. So uh, there are two important uh, uh, results here. The first is that the critical exponent is always uh, one half. Okay? It's square root two, and it doesn't depend on lambda, which is a penalty coupling, and c, which is a number of physical qubits. And that means, uh, um, in the sense, um, nested uh, QAC doesn't change the quality of um, na nature of a second order phase function. However, uh, we can see that uh, at least we can uh, enlarge the, the coefficient of this uh, uh, gap closing. So uh, we could say that um, um, we can change the phase function uh, quantitatively in this sense. Okay, um, so far uh, I just talked about a nested quantum annealing of um, uh, stochastic case. Okay. The driver Hamiltonian was just x. But now uh, I want to consider x x term. So that, that we, uh, uh, the motivation is um, that there are many, uh, not so many, but there are several works uh, suggesting that if you use a non stochastic Hamiltonian, you can, sometimes you can increase the success rate. And I want to uh, use the, uh, study this uh, kind of, uh, use this suggestion in the context of a nested quantum annealing correction. So the first uh, question I want to ask is, so in this work, um, they put XX coupling between logical qubit. And in that case, uh, if you have a large uh, problem, you have to have uh, so uh, many XX coupling. And do we need all this uh, XX coupling to get the benefit of non-stochastic speed? So um, I, I want to know uh, how many XX coupling do we need to uh, improve the uh, uh, phase, uh, any, any uh, computation uh, success probability. Okay. And uh, the second part uh, is, uh, is not necessarily unnecessary quantum annealing, but uh, is a non stochastic Hamiltonian strong enough to uh, so, uh, uh, make the uh, spin glass problem, which is a very difficult problem, easier than uh, just using a standard uh, driver Hamiltonian. Okay. So um, I want to consider uh, X coupling not the uh, uh, between a uh, logical qubit, but just within uh, one logical uh, qubit. So, um, so this is a, a transpass field that uh, we use, and then we add uh, excess coupling, but this excess coupling is only between this uh, logical qubit. So you have uh, excess coupling within here, and excess coupling within here, but there's no excess coupling between logical qubits. Okay. And I want to know uh, if uh, um, we can uh, in, improve the uh, uh, phase function. Okay. So uh, we do the, uh, we did the same uh, analysis, a mean field analysis, and in this case, uh, we have a new order parameter, which is uh, uh, magnetization in z, uh, uh, in x direction. Okay. So that appears here and here. Okay. Now uh, we study the, uh, how the order parameter changes uh, in this context. So uh, this is uh, um, uh, magnetization in z direction and magnetization in x direction as a function of transfer speed. And uh, so we set the uh, uh, excess coupling very small. And in this case, you clearly see that there is a first order phase function. So uh, M goes from here to here, and, uh, and X uh, jumps from here to here. Now uh, we increase the, um, the penalty coupling. Then the result is this. So as we see, uh, the order parameter changes continuously from one to zero and zero to one. And that means just putting a uh, xx term in a logical qubit, um, you can still improve the uh, computational result. You can improve the first order phase function. Okay. 
Now, uh, this model was quite simple. Uh, it's just a Peabody fermionic case. And you might wonder if it's just an artificial fact that the problem is too simple. So uh, we looked at the uh, uh, Hopfield model. So Hopfield model has uh, randomness. Okay. So uh, this one, uh, it looks like a ferromagnetic phase, but uh, the difference uh, is here. So this guzai is a random number, and uh, each uh, logical uh, qubit has a random number. And then uh, in addition to this, uh, there is a, uh, it's called uh, the number of patterns. Okay. So if the pattern number is one, then you can remove this phase factor by just uh, uh, doing gauge transformation. But uh, if the uh, pattern number becomes large, and it's, more than, it's bigger than one, then um, you cannot remove this uh, phase. And especially uh, the interesting case is that uh, this uh, pattern number pattern increases as the system size uh, increases. So this is kind of uh, extreme uh, limit. And, and so uh, from the extensive, uh, extensivity of free energy, we have to choose this uh, number pattern to be uh, n, the pro, uh, logical qubit side, to the power of p minus one. Okay. But uh, we can change this coefficient. And it is known that uh, if this um, uh, constant is uh, above certain critical value, then uh, this uh, model goes into a spin glass phase. So it, it becomes uh, difficult. But uh, if below this one, uh, below this uh, critical value, you, you can stay, it's called a retriever phase. And, and this phase uh, doesn't have uh, any uh, uh, replica symmetry breaking. So uh, we studied it because a spin graph is difficult to analyze. So, okay. And uh, okay, so we do the mean field analysis. And in this case, we have to introduce new uh, order parameters. Uh, one is a uh, spin graph order parameter, which is a correlation between a different um, uh, replica space. And the second one is um, the quantum fluctuation. Uh, it's a, a correlation within the same uh, uh, replica space. And here is the free energy, it's, uh, looks complicated. And this is the uh, um, order parameter. Okay, so this is a magnetization, and this is a spin, order, uh, spin, spin glass order parameter. And again, uh, we choose a uh, uh, penalty coupling to be small. And you see uh, there is a first order phase function from here to here in both cases. And now we increase the, uh, this coupling, uh, penalty coupling. I chose to be seven, and now you see um, first order phase function disappeared, and it becomes a second order phase function. So it seems that uh, this uh, feature is quite generic, and um, uh, just uh, adding an XX term in a local, uh, uh, we, just within this uh, uh, logical qubit, you can still improve the uh, computational result. Okay, that's a mean field uh, suggestion. Okay, so the final part is uh, it's not a nested uh, quantum annealing correction, but just a uh, XX term in spin glass phase. So, uh, so far we looked at um, this X, X term is useful to improve the uh, computation outside of spin glass phase. And uh, we want to know uh, if that is still, um, this kind of feature uh, still uh, survives in the spin glass phase. So uh, to study this, uh, we consider again a Peabody uh, infinite range interaction model, but uh, this uh, coupling has uh, some different uh, behavior. It's called a solar code, solar code. Uh, so this coupling uh, follows uh, this kind of dis distribution. It's uh, roughly the Gaussian distribution, and this, this guzai uh, takes a plus one and a minus one randomly. Okay. This is just a normalization. So the uh, configuration average partition function is given by this, and we take a uh, summation for uh, jij, uh, the coupling, and also uh, take the uh, average for this uh, guzai i configuration. Okay. So. Um, this model is known, uh, is very famous when we take a P to infinity, and this, uh, it, this model becomes a random energy model. So random model, energy model is, as uh, the name suggests, that, that there is no correlation between uh, different energy levels. So if you want to find uh, the probability of finding uh, E1 and E2 different energy level, then uh, it's just a product of uh, having E1 and having E2. So, so, so this is uh, uh, so just a random system. And uh, we, want to, we first want to study this uh, numerically. And so in this case, uh, we can just consider a problem Hamiltonian, which has uh, only diagonal component. And this diagonal component has a, a Gaussian distribution following this uh, kind of thing. Okay. And then uh, we add uh, x term and x x term. So here is the Hamiltonian. Um, I use a different normalization for a computational reason, but uh, it's the same. 
Uh, so uh, S is a ratio between, uh, okay, so P, this P is a problem Hamiltonian. So the diagonal part has a random distribution. And uh, this XX is a, a XX coupling, uh, which generates a non stochasticity. And this X is a standard uh, driver Hamiltonian. And S is, uh, uh, in the annealing, uh, S goes from zero to one. So initially we have large uh, transverse field and uh, eventually this becomes zero. So S uh, goes from one to zero. And uh, W is a ratio uh, between uh, problem and Hamiltonian and X, X, one. Okay. So uh, we studied uh, the energy spectrum of this system. And uh, so uh, this is a numerical result. Um, so we first set uh, omega equal one, which means that there is no X, X, one. And it's just a, a random, uh, okay, so a random uh, um, energy model in the presence of uh, just a transverse field. And the uh, energy uh, spectrum, uh, the energy gap between the ground state and uh, excited state behaves like this. And so actually this uh, is just reproducing the uh, work by Joe and his uh, collaborators, and they studied this. Um, okay, so, uh, and there is a phase function, and I'm, this is not really uh, closing to zero because it's a, a finite lattice system. But you see, you start to see a uh, um, uh, spinning glass uh, phase function. This is a first order phase function. And now we add uh, XX time. Okay. And especially uh, we are interested in a uh, high, large uh, XX coupling. So we choose uh, W to be uh, 0 0.2. And now we see um, the energy gap is much smaller than this case. Okay. So this is a uh, 0 0.4 and uh, 0 0.4 is this one. And uh, all the uh, en uh, energy gap stays very small. And also there are many um, up and down, okay. many uh, phase function type behaviors. So, this looks very bad. Uh, if you add uh, a non stochastic, uh, if you consider non stochastic Hamiltonian, it seems that the gap becomes smaller than, uh, just with, uh, than the stochastic case. So, so why this happened? Actually, there is a uh, um, simple explanation for this. So, let's uh, assume first consider that uh, this W also, oh, this W equals zero. Okay, so we, we don't consider problem Hamiltonian. And in that case, uh, it's just a transition from uh, anti ferromagnetic phase to ferromagnetic phase. And then uh, this part is the uh, energy spectrum of a ferromagnetic system, and this is the uh, uh, energy spectrum of an uh, anti ferromagnetic system. And now uh, you see that uh, the ground state here goes to the highest energy state, and uh, the uh, second um, high, uh, lowest energy state goes to the second highest state, and so on. And so there are many uh, gap crossing here, the, uh, energy uh, level crossing here. And in fact, uh, you can easily show that uh, there are half n uh, gap crossing in this case, okay? And now uh, we turn on uh, this uh, problem Hamiltonian as a perturbation. And then uh, this gap crossing becomes avoided uh, level crossing. So uh, we start to have a, a gap opening here, but still, since uh, we are doing perturbation from this configuration, uh, we can expect that the, ga the gap is very small, and also there are many gap closing type behavior. And that is what we are seeing here. But uh, this is not, uh, to some extent, a serious problem in the sense that uh, uh, the, those gap closing um, do not survive in the large end limit. It's different from uh, like a spin glass phase function, which uh, becomes zero when uh, you take n to zero. So probably we don't need to worry about this uh, phase function, uh, this gap causing seriously. So uh, the next, uh, we consider uh, this uh, uh, system analytically by using a mean field analysis. And then uh, we have um, uh, many uh, order parameters, and this is a uh, uh, magnetization in Z direction, and magnetization X direction, and a spin glass order parameter, and a spin fluctuation, and then compute a uh, partition function as before. So uh, this system, uh, when uh, this P goes to zero, P-body interaction, and P, uh, we take uh, P to infinity to get a random energy model. And in this case, uh, there are two types of so so solution. And one is called a uh, replica symmetric solution. And in this case, uh, the uh, spin glass order parameter takes a uniform value inside a um, uh, replica space. Okay? And so this is uh, free energy, and uh, some A and B are described by this one. And a uh, uh, non stochastic effect, I mean, XX time effect appears here and uh, here. So, yet equal zero case was studied before by Obuchi and Nishimori and Sherrington. And this is an extension of this, uh, their 
analysis. Okay. So, um, and the, another uh, solution is called uh, one replica symmetry breaking uh, solution. And in this case, uh, the spin glass order parameter can take uh, two defined values, and one uh, corresponds to um, octagonal component in replica space, and Q1, uh, which is uh, corresponds to, uh, which describes the uh, diagonal component of the um, uh, replica space. And the uh, free energy is given by this one. Okay. Now uh, we want to see um, how the phase function changes by uh, introducing this unknown uh, uh, xx term. So uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, phase function between uh, uh, quantum paramagnet to uh, spin glass phase. Okay. So uh, oh, sorry. So this is a free energy as a function of transverse field. And when the, uh, there is no xx term in just a transverse field, then uh, free energy of a uh, uh, paramagnetic phase is, behaves like this. And the spin glass uh, free energy is always constant. The spins are frozen in certain direction. So it's constant. Okay. So uh, above this value, uh, the physical state is um, uh, paramagnetic, paramagnetic phase. And uh, below this uh, transverse field, uh, you say uh, you are in the uh, spin glass phase. And as you increase the uh, um, excess coupling, this uh, phase function point moves to a larger value, like this. This one corresponds to uh, beta equal 12, and 40 is like this. And so this is a uh, plot of a critical transverse exponent, uh, transverse field as a function of, uh, of uh, um, excess coupling. And uh, it monotonically increases. And uh, the magnetization in x direction monotonically decreases from 1 to close to 0. Okay. So what? Ah, okay, yeah. So what is the uh, effect of uh, the meaning of this? Um, we can estimate again uh, um, the energy gap uh, of this uh, first order phase. So there is a first order phase function here, and uh, we can estimate uh, the energy gap of this uh, phase function by looking at uh, instanton solution. So again, uh, we can look at the, um, the effective Hamiltonian and uh, the uh, eigenstate of those. And so uh, yet I call zero again, or studied uh, Jork and uh, his work, uh, his collaborators. And so this case, uh, effect Hamiltonian takes uh, this form. A1 is a complicated function, so I, I don't like. Um, a paramagnetic phase, uh, A1 is equal to zero. So effective Hamiltonian is pointing in x direction. So the ground state is you know, x direction. And spin glass phase, uh, A, A1 becomes very really large. So that means effectively the Hamiltonian is in z direction. So um, the instanton uh, configuration, uh, instanton value is uh, overlap between x, you know, spin pointing x, and spin pointing z, which is given by this one, up to some uh, normalization. I skipped uh, some normalization coefficient. Now uh, we uh, introduce uh, um, excess coupling, which has uh, which appears here. But this case, now if you take p, p to infinity, we still have a1 to be zero. So at phase function, this value actually becomes very really small. But still, compared to zero, this value is large. So the spin is still pointing in x direction. And, and so uh, if you estimate the energy gap, there is no difference. And this situation is uh, quite similar to um, Grover problem or peak or infinity limit of fermionic state. So if you do a peak or infinity, the order physical value takes either zero or one. So there is no flexibility. So there's no improvement here. However, if you consider finite p, then uh, things can change. So uh, we consider perturbation from a uh, peak or infinity. So this uh, A1 is, uh, can be away from zero, but still small. But now the main difference is that uh, this time is also small at the uh, phase function point. And that means uh, um, the coefficient of uh, z and the coefficient of x can be comparable at the quantum phase function. Okay. So um, if you evaluate uh, the instanton, then um, so before, uh, before adding uh, any um, xx coupling, it was transferred from x to z. But now, uh, if you have a eta term, uh, this uh, xx coupling, the, uh, the tr before the transition, the spin points in uh, closer to x direction. Like uh, this is a theta, it's angle between x and uh, z. And so the phase transition happens between here and here. And that means the overlap is uh, larger than, uh, becomes larger than just uh, x to z. So in, in this sense, um, we, this, suggest, uh, this perturbation suggests that the uh, um, um, non-stochastic term can Im still uh, improve uh, this uh, quantum phase function. And more interesting question is, of course, uh, what happens if you increase uh, this uh, eta term 
and that is uh, beyond uh, uh, the perturbation analysis, and uh, uh, we want to understand if this uh, eventually goes into a second order phase function or not. And hopefully, uh, we can uh, show the result quite soon. Uh, thank you. Okay, we have time for questions. Mohammed? Uh, random energy models uh, are unstructured, complete unstructured, like, like Grover search. So you wouldn't expect ever uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, turn yeah, first exactly. order, yes, second order. I agree with that. The peak coefficient is uh, just not dynamic. Yeah. More questions? David. So if you go back maybe five slides or so, I think it was maybe slide 12 or something. Uh, well, oh. that one, perfect. Okay. Yes. So um, sometimes I often wonder when people are putting on these, you know, two, two body driver terms, mm -hmm. what would happen if instead of having those two terms commute, that you had them so that they didn't commute? And okay, so in okay. particular, you had an HYY. Okay, okay. Because you know, that would seemingly make, you know, the f those lines would no longer cross, and that would that's, be... That's right, yeah, so maybe that's a, a way to avoid uh, this kind of small uh, gap closing. Yeah, that, that's a good suggestion, yes. Okay, so. thank you. More questions? Well, if not, let's thank the speaker again.